Hello everybody and welcome back to DuckTales Reviews on the Game Bro Station YouTube channel. Oh, I'm so excited. Joining us as always is Matt. Hello everyone, I'm glad to be here talking about ducks and their silly adventures. Ooh, Matt, how proper and butler-like of you. Wow, well, thank you very much. Well, now it's yeah. just uh, completely out of character. He broke character. Let's keep reviewing DuckTales episode 13. Gotta say this right, because yeah. I autocorrect it when I read it. <laughs> Muck Mystery at McDuck, McManor, not brought, not brought to you by McDonald's. <laughs> no, it's not. Or Old McDonald. That was a joke when I saw the title. I was like, well, this is like a commercial for McDonald's? Hey, there's some... I literally read it as Mystery at McDuck. M Mc, <laughs> M I can't even say it a second time. It's such a muck cluster cluck. What hell of a tongue twister. <laughs> Quite. Mm. Um, but in this episode, it's Scrooge's birthday. Yes, it is. Webby and Mrs. Beakley are out of the house for some Hunger Games-esque child training. Yeah, child training, killing people. Donald gets the heck out of Dodge, but actually makes that appearance in this episode. <laughs> yeah, Donald. Which was like, oh, hey, Donald's here. Did, did they even give a real reason, like, what his reasons were? Or he was just like, nah, screw it, I'm out of here. Like, at first I thought it was just Scrooge just gets really angry at his uh, birthdays or something but then it was just like he just wants to be left alone why is donald like ready to migrate south wow yeah no <laughs> like, that kind of didn't work it feels like that was just okay we have donald in this series but we kind of need to get rid of donald right now <laughs> yeah yeah that's the sad truth dude mm. but <clears throat> talking about the episode as i clear my throat another time <laughs> as we establish it's scrooge's birthday Happy everybody birthday. but the triplets are out of the house and we all hear about how Scrooge never enjoyed a birthday party after his beloved butler, Duckworth, who you may remember from the original series, had died. We don't know how. We just assume he's died before the series started. But yeah, at least Donald and Mrs. Beakley appeared to know this person. Yeah. This isn't that far back. Yeah. So Huey gets this crazy idea that he's going to throw Scrooge the best party to prove he's the best party planner and that he can do it because he's apparently really concerned about being the best party planner. Yeah, it's very selfish reasons. It's not yeah. so much like, oh, I want to show Scrooge how much we love him. No, I got to be the best. And it's a perfect opportunity to show it, it. Does, it does touch on that. Like, we're not even really being that, you know, yeah, not, no, not no. even kidding around too much here with that one, I think. Yeah, no, the writers are not that... Cricket, God. Yeah. Cricket. Not that no, not that cricket, if I do say so myself. Um, <laughs> so, in a haste to have rushed together a very uninspired party, they invite Scrooge's nemesis. And because we're only 13 episodes in, we've recycled a few villains, and we still haven't seen the full entourage of, you know, Disney villains so far. That just leaves us with only Flint Hard Glum Gold in a toga. <laughs> Ma Beagle in a plague doctor's mask. Yeah. One of her sons as a dark arts stage magician, kind of like, a, what's one of those weirdy, the street magic? The illusionist. The illusionist. That's what they call themselves, the, the, I think. You're an illusionist. The Chris Angel. That's who, I, that's who I'm thinking of, Chris Angel. What one a douche. Yeah. And um, Mark Beeks, who's here, who the, Ma Beagle makes a wonderful point of just pointing out how is this guy one of Scrooge's <laughs> villains? It's almost like the writers know this new villain quite isn't hacking it. Yeah, no, for sure, dude. And um, only to find out that the Beagle Boy, what was his name? Bla uh, it was Darkheart or something? It was some kind of emo name. I'm some A sure. very emo name. Accidentally did summon a spirit in a plan... To prove he, that his magic lessons weren't a complete waste of time to his yeah. mother, as she was a, trying to get the deed to the Duckburg, which we now know it's called Duckburg because Scrooge owns the town yeah. and leases it to the city. Leases it to the mayor and all those guys. Which he had stole from, I guess, Ma Beagle's grandfather, who had originally stole it from the town fair and square, mind you. Yeah, yeah. That was actually kind of an okay little. Ah, that's kind of yeah, that's still, kind of funny. What's actually kind of funny is like during that reveal for a while. I don't know why. I actually thought it was Webby and uh, what's the Mrs. Beakley. Mrs. Beakley's because I was like they were kind of hinting at the beginning of the whole survival stuff. And I was like, I wonder if this is just a weird way of trying to like test the boys on this because it felt like that for a second. I was it like, did. I wonder if it's actually Webby and it Beakley. It does take a bit of a turn when it's just like. Supernatural again. It's not like, 
whoa, okay, a minute here. Yeah, yeah, that threw me off. Because they make a point of it that uh, Emo Beagle Boy is just an illusionist. He is by no means... He wants to be, you know, be able to conjure demons and stuff. And I was, for a second, I honestly thought, "Wow, did we completely miss the episode where Magicka dispel like That's what I was came gonna... back or something?" Yeah, I was like, "Is this like a loose connection that Magicka is actually like full formed and back?" But no, no, but it wasn't. <laughs> but we find out that that ghost skull demon from the intro is Duckworth. <laughs> oh yeah, I man, I did not make that connection. They use that design because apparently in the time that Scrooge found out. Duckworth basically started plucking off off the party guests, kind of you know, kind of the bit of a murder mystery style esque almost. It was definitely a clue. It was inspired by clue. Bit of a clue thing going on, and uh, Duckworth proceeds to kick all the enemies out of the house. Mark Beaks actually getting kind of the funniest kick out of the <laughs> the that. mansion. I've never really lived my life. Hashtag no. help. Hashtag no. help. Uh, just <laughs> falls out the window. Falls like a couple feet. <laughs> but um, yeah. So Duckworth is back now as a ghost in this version, which is kind of funny because that totally threw me off. I was like, when did he die? And what's funny, I was going to tell you this later, Mark. I actually end up be watching. All the bosses and cutscenes in the remastered DuckTales thing. Yeah. I remember seeing the butler guy there. Yeah. Now, I guess I must have semi disassociated it to the new DuckTales. I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, he probably appeared in the show too. <laughs> no, I told, you, you blew my mind when you said, like, oh, yeah, he never appeared in the show actually of this reboot. Of the like, reboot, yes. I was like, what? It's just one of those characters, like, yeah, he was in the background somewhere, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. But I was like, oh, it's kind of grim to make him just suddenly dead. In this version, though, it seems like he has more of a relationship or rivalry with Mrs. Beakley now. Yeah, I exactly. guess something because she sees him at the end of the episode. She's like, "I was happier when you were dead." Damn, son! Just like, Whoa, That's some ex bio oh. shit right there. Yeah, Whew. to get topical. Ooh, a little too. Woof. Woo. Oh, put out that fire, but um. Oh yeah, and uh, Dewey's head is stuck in a Daft Punk helmet. Yeah, I was about to say that. I was like. <laughs> I was like, how is he able to emote those without using his hands? I thought he was using, like, buttons on the guitar. No, there were times when he didn't have the guitar up and he just oh. made faces. How like, does Daft Punk do it? Daft Punk, if you're out there, yeah. we are. We want your trade secrets. <laughs> don't worry, we won't post them on the internet. We don't do that. We just talk about episode cartoons and post them on the internet anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the synopsis, Matt. Your thoughts overall? Well, I think you and I definitely agreed. It probably wasn't as fun as the golf episode, which was previous of our viewing. Yeah. But I did like the fact that I was doing a little bit of a Clue vibe. Although I will say, aesthetically, this episode felt more empty to me. Yeah. Than I would have liked it to. I think also just, like, when you, when I, because I read the t- the title, I read the description, like, the, the quick synopsis, not spoilery or anything. Right. Before we viewed this, and I was like... All of Scrooge's villain of enemies are gathered at this dinner party at his honor. And I was like, okay, this is going to be fun. We're just going to. But yeah. we really only have three villains established that at least can show up at this point. So I was kind of like, oh, I was like, well, maybe are they going to use it as a way to introduce the rest of them all at once or something yeah. or something? So. Like yeah, that the lack of villains being invited to this dinner party, I think, did not help with the emptiness this episode felt. Yeah, I don't know if it was just the cinematography song because I was thinking like aesthetically it looked empty. Maybe mm-hmm. it was just because how the shots were angled. It's like we were in the main hall of the mansion. It was a really tall building. We don't room. really leave the foyer of the building. No, we don't. And I guess I don't know. That just kind of added distance. And yeah, it's just three villains. It was only a handful of people and. For a party, you expect to see, like, more tables, more punches, more balloons, more something. Like, even if they had, I don't know, uh, Gizmo Duck uh, and, like, Launchpad were invited to the party. Like, some other characters to fill the room a little bit or even even make some more jokes. You're telling me, Louis, that you had an hour to bring all these people together. You didn't have time to, like, get Launchpad involved. Like, Launchpad wasn't down to go to Scrooge McDuck's birthday. No, dude, I'm just getting my driver's license, man. Ah, that was a terrible launch pad. But yeah, no, like oh, not not a bad not a t- not the worst episode I think we've seen. But no. I think coming off the Darkwing Duck and the Gizmo Duck episode, then the golf episode, this one out of the most out of the new batch of episodes we've had so far, 
might be considered the weakest, I think, amongst us. Would that be fair? I definitely think so. It, I mean, the only real pull we got from it is that apparently the butler's back, but in a ghostly sense. Yeah, which I don't know what that's going to lend to anything, as, just to make it different. I guess so. I mean, like just having another tangible character in the roster that we already have, which is already pretty big. Yeah. I guess more opportunities of strange things that could happen. I don't know. I think this, but I think this makes more villains, I guess, if we're going to make a point that Scrooge has his own rogues gallery. Yeah. I mean, you know more about the rogues gallery than I do. Cause I mean, as far as like the Beagle boys and the uh, uh, Scottish guy is like, I really don't know much about it. I mostly no, just know fair. Darkwing Ducks as villains. No, yeah. At least seen them. But, um, I think overall, a good episode, maybe not living up to what I think are even imaginations when you think of any situations where it's like, it's your favorite character's birthday party. All the villains showed up to ruin his party. Yeah. You know, it kind of didn't live up to that grand scale. Yeah. I think it's just pretty much what you just said. Like, there's a limited roster of villains as of the moment. So, like, they're not really going to work together or collaborate or do anything like that create some like crazy scheme or add to the mystery they were just there they were just there Glum, glumgold literally had so many he had to throw together a bomb at the last minute he, he was said. the only interesting guy i'll be honest honestly with you. yeah his seeing his little what he was planning before the party and all how it went awry was really one of the more comedic moments of the episode and what's funny about that is that he only had like an hour maybe even less to plan yeah but device. he was just like he so, had like Four or five different ways. It was like, but eventually I just settled on a bomb and a cake. Classic. Yeah, right. So, but like I said, with uh, Mama Beagle and uh, the YOLO guy, it's like not really much to it. She's like, yeah. No, and I think it it works with Glumgold at this point because now he's been in a, a handful of episodes already. Like this is only, yes, I believe, the second time we've seen Ma Beagle or a Beagle boy in general. Yeah. So. I don't know, yeah. We shall see, we shall see. I think this episode was mostly just served to introduce the butler. Yeah. Maybe a couple of little backstories of like what's with uh, Mama Beagle. Yeah, I just always assumed it had just been, she's a, she's a uh, there was a famous uh, criminal who was based, Ma, uh, Ma Beagle was based off, I forget her name. Yeah, but like, yeah, I think I know what you're kind of I was talking. like, okay, she's she runs a crime family or whatever, that's her shtick. She's not, she doesn't have some backstory it's just yeah this is what she does yeah it's like oh it's just scrooge mcduck and mob beagle they just suddenly cross paths and that's it she, but no, it, she runs a family of thieves scrooge has a lot of stuff what's worth thieving yeah there you go so i was like yeah there's that connection so but the painting with the little bit of backstory there i thought actually was kind of funny yeah no that was <laughs> he leases the town he, he leases the town to the citizens that's so cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I think we're really just circling the drain here a bit on what to say, because there wasn't too much. No, it wasn't too much. Just an excuse to introduce some of these elements. And mm. unfortunately, it didn't make me laugh as much as like the previous episode. So. No. no, there were no murder ponies. No, no murder ponies. No. They could have brought back the murder ponies as oh. villains, had them show up to the party. Oh, that would like hilarious. it would have been maybe weird to explain magic wise, but just like there's the murder ponies. I don't know. <laughs> It was more Tara Strong, man. Yeah. You well, never go wrong with that. Never go wrong with Tara Strong. Nope. So right, it rhymes. Well, everybody, I guess that does it for this episode. Now, the next episode, we do have another hiatus coming up. So join us again in June. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. And so I shall close our little review podcast. It is a spoiler. It's so in the title. Mark pleasure doing this again with you good sir to likewise and like i like to say here on this channel along with every chap and two hickey you went cockney oh fuck off you to be continued thank you <laughs> yeah. calm down there mark i'm sorry <laughs>